Hello everyone, welcome back to X-Plane 11 once again. My name is Jeff Aviano. Today we're checking out Mike Wilson's DC-8. This is the DC-871 freighter series here on the ramp in Kansas City, Missouri. We're going to fly out of Kansas City and we're going down to Memphis. We're going to do a FedEx charter flight for them. Uh, and this airplane holds a, a, a pretty good spot in my heart. I worked with this airplane for many years when I worked on the, uh, on the ramp. Uh, it was my cargo contract that I was the manager of. Uh, and I went up to Toledo, Ohio and did all the training. So this is my bread and butter. This is this is the airplane that, uh, you know, I had the most hands on training with. And uh, it's amazing to see this in game, especially in the ATI colors, the Air Transport International colors. It looks absolutely awesome. November 799 or Alpha Lima I actually worked on this airplane quite a few times. So to see the next plane is pretty awesome. You get a uh, little stair trucks here that, you know, pop up next to the plane. Uh, you can see some cargo down there on the ground when we have the forward door open and the uh, the stairs. Here in the front, it's kind of strange. Uh, what we used to do is have a air cart or a huffer, uh, and we would have a GPU. Now, here it shows a GPU, but it's got an air hose coming out of that GPU. So we'd always hook up the uh, GPU uh, about right there. And the air uh, hose itself for the air start, that would be right under here. You just open this little flap. And we always had a problem with it. It was like a three-way like rocker kind of uh, clamp and uh, to keep the, the door open. And that thing would notoriously not want to close. Uh, we've even had a, a DC-8 fly in one time with it open. And it's like, that's bad. You were up at 30 something thousand feet with that thing open, flapping in the wind. That's just tells you how resilient these airplanes are. Uh, but anywho, let's hop up into the cockpit and get acquainted with it. We'll uh, jump here into the engineer station. This is a three man airplane. You have a flight engineer, you have your first officer and your captain. Very old airplane. The texture work in here is it, it shines in some aspects, but uh, there are some, you know, some things that aren't aren't the greatest. Like you can see the photo real textures and then you can see like just straight up like that right there. And it doesn't, you know, go that well together. The floor textures and uh, things like that. But I mean, like other than other than the, 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 the simplicity, it's not bad. It really is not. And the night lighting and HDR, it looks really nice uh, and it captures the DC-8 quite well. So let's hop over here into the flight engineer station uh, and we can open up the cargo door. I'll click on right there. So this is your cargo door, your front door. Uh, you can hide or show the GPU down there uh, and you can hide or show the stairs right there, which is really cool. I like that little uh, that little option for us. So the cargo door is open and we can load this baby up. Check that out. That looks pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and do that first things first. We'll go to weight and balance. Uh, and we're going to do total fuel weight. We're doing about hour flights. So we only need 14,000 pounds of fuel on board here. So go about 14 right there. Looks good. Hit done. That gives us uh, 30 minutes of extra fuel if we have to divert. We'll hit apply changes. And now that is set. Back up to the cockpit we go. I'm going to open up my checklist. This comes with some checklists. Uh, we're going to do the before start check. So Stairs are good. Doors are open. Take off and departure briefing. We're going to be departing uh, the Racer 5, I believe, out of here. And we're going to do a Springfield transition down to uh, Memphis. And we're doing the barbecue to arrival into Memphis. Expecting ILS runway, I believe it, 36. Yeah, 36 right into Memphis. So stairs are good. Doors are good, like I said. Cockpit check. We're good to go there. Fire warnings. It's all been taken care of. Parking brake. We want to make sure that sucker is set. Uh, it's kind of like the MD-80. You have to press it down to give you the parking brake and then you pull it to release it. All right. That looks good. Mask and oxygen. We want to check that on 100%. That's right here. And that looks good. Uh, battery and norm DC bus set. So norm right here. So let's go battery. Battery on. And norm DCS bus for the avionics. Nope. And then close the guard. That looks good there. Hydraulic pressure, we want to make sure we have that here in a second uh, once we, we start the auxiliary hydraulic pump. However, we want to do the external power. So that air cart down there, we're going to start it up by putting this into external power mode. And you'll hear it fire up. And it sounds just like a real air start, except for uh, you'll hear it once in a while start raising up in uh, in pitch. And when it does that, that's when the airplane is starting to use it to start the engine. So the sound recording he used for the air start uh, is like right before they started the engines up. So it's not like a, a constant, you know what I mean? So you'll hear, you'll hear that later on. I'll, I'll explain it. AC Volt looks good. We're in the green. Uh, auxiliary hydraulic pump. We want to start it and make sure it works. 
And uh, wait for this thing to go flipping over. There it goes. All the way up. That looks good. And we can turn it off. It's just for a little test there. Auxiliary hydraulic pump is checked off. Generators three and one are next on the list. We got three and oh, sorry. Gens up here. Three and one. There we go. And you hear that pitch rise like that? That's what it would do if it was just getting ready to start the engines. All right. So that's good. Generators three and one. Bus power one, two, three, and four will go on. So we'll go boom, 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 boom. Those four are good to go. Flight recorder is on. Uh, what else we got here? Galley power on. The galley power, not really worried about it because we don't have passengers. We're just cargo. So we're just going to keep it on. We're going to turn it off before the, the takeoff checklist and stuff. And we're just going to leave it off. We don't need it. Um, so that's good to go. Engine and oil quantity has been checked. Fuel quantity is good to go down here. As you can see, all across the board, we got 14,084. I'm happy with that. Cabin altitude pressure. For this airplane, you keep it at 7,500. That works out just right, what they want. So I'm happy with that. That's set. Bleed air set to APU. Let's go bleed air over to APU. Uh, so recirculating fans. Those are down here. Turn those guys on. Freon compressors. Now, you don't have packs in this airplane. You have Freon compressors. That's how old the airplane is. Uh, however, in flight, I have these shut off because it's extremely loud. I'll show you what that is later on down the road. So they're normal. Windshield heat. Go over here to the overhead now. So window heat comes on. Uh, no smoking signs. Not worried about them, but we can turn them on just for fun. Just like that. Just to show you that they work. Anti-skid off light should be on on the panel. It is off. There's the light right there. Fantastic. Altimeters. We're going to set them for local, uh, which it should be set right now. I haven't changed. I just did a flight uh, in from St. Louis. And uh, now we're going to go down to Memphis from there. So let's look and see what we got here on the iPad. I'll use the, my iPad here to, to look it up. Okay, winds are 220 at 7 knots, so we're taking off on runway 1 left. Uh, 10 statute miles of visibility, few clouds, 3,000 scattered, 15,000 feet. 2982 should be on the front, so 2982 is set. That looks nice. So altimeters are good to go. Radio altimeters, 1,500 set. Radio, radar, and transponder will set on standby. There it is right there. That looks good to me. I want to turn on the uh, nav lights, actually, at this time. Nav, that looks good to me. All right. Fantastic. Final load and takeoff data set. Stab trim, don't need much. This airplane is, uh, you know, you can easily tail strike it. It's so long. Um, one thing that's weird is I can't move the trim up and down with the normal trim tab because we have no power to it right now. We got to manually move it. And we're just going to go about right there. That's going to be more than enough because the airplane will naturally just kind of float right off the runway. That's the way that it's designed. So stab trim is set and checked. We're ready to start the engines and get out of here. So it's a little bit different in this airplane. We have to start the engines up and then program our FMC. That's what we have to do. <laughs> so outside, you see there, the air hose is actually modeled and plugged into the plane in the wrong spot. That's showing you the GPU cable. But uh, regardless, it's, it's still animated, which is pretty neat. So let's go ahead and close these doors and get out of here. Close the doors. Hide the stairs. Don't need those anymore. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do beacon on just to let the ground crew know we're ready to get out of here and start this airplane up. You see right there, got the beacon going and uh, the entire area around the airplane is clear and we're ready to start the engines. So an engine start in this is actually pretty simple. Not much to it. We'll do inertial navigation system. We're going to set that to FMS because what we're going to do, oops, go to that view there. We want this on FMS. There it is all the way to the right. Uh, beacon is on. Galley power off for start, like I said. So I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to worry about the galley power. Just going to leave it off this entire time. Don't need it at all. All right. Recirculating fans are going to go off for takeoff. Uh, Freon compressors are going to go off as well. Like I said, those things are extremely loud when we're up in the air because uh, the airplane uses engine one for all the sound. So uh, four, three, and two don't have very much sound associated with them. And they put all the sounds on number one, which it makes sense. But uh, 
That's just how it works. All right, so those are good. Now we go back to the overhead panel. We'll do the uh, ignition override. It's going to go to the armed position. Oop, armed. Igniters are going to come on. One, two, three, four. That looks nice. Engine three, fuel switch. So you start at three, four, two, three, two, four, three, four, two, one is how you're, you're going to start the engines on uh, this particular airplane. Three, four, two, and then one. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into this. Yeah, this one works pretty good. So three, give it some fuel right there like that. And then we can just simply start engine three by pushing this big blue button. Here we go. And you can see it rising there. As that engine starts to come to life. That's good right there. Fantastic. And you can see we got pressure. We've got everything right here we got our egt and it's uh stabilizing right there we got fuel flow on that engine as well so we're going to go three and then we're going to do four two then one so let's do four engine four now one thing i haven't tried doing yet is doing a cross start with the dc8 we used to shoot you know uh fire them up on uh engines three and two and then once the inboards were fired up we'd push them out and then they would spool those up to get the required uh, air to start engines four and one. It's a little bit different. That's pretty good right there. You see the engine coming online. We can hear it outside starting to happen. So now next we go two and then one. Let's go to engine two. Let's fire up two. And you only have to hold it for about four to five seconds here. I kind of wait for the sound to trickle off and then I'll release it. About right there. You can see that one coming up to life and engine one, our final one. And this one is going to have a total different sound, like I said, because the engine sound is attached to this. And you'll actually even hear the air start in the background of that recording. Right there, hear it. There we go. That looks nice. And now you can see we have a PFD, HSI and all that is all to life. We have the FMS working and uh, the airplane is happy because of that reason. So. Next up will be the after start checklist. It's a pretty short one. So we're just going to do that one before we do the taxi and takeoff. So doors and windows are closed. We're going to double check that outside. Yep. That looks good to me. I'm happy with it. All right. Hydraulic oil and temperature. We've already checked all that. Hydraulics are good. Electrical panel has been checked. Galley power. We're going to keep it off. Don't need it. Seatbelt signs. Don't care. Pedo heat. That's going to come on now. Right there. So pedo heat's good. We have our little pedo tubes outside warming up. Engine anti-ice, not worried about it. Ground equipment is clear left and right. And then they want the parking brake off. So all we gotta do now is we can shut down the uh we can shut down this guy here. So let's go ahead and do that. We don't need the external power anymore. That's gonna shut down. Now we can turn engines two and four gens on. That looks good. Which is strange. I thought it was on this checklist, but I guess it's I guess it's not. Oh, yeah, it is right there. Uh, generators two and four on. Inverter on. That's what we were needed to do. Almost forgot about it. Inverter goes on. Bleed air is good. We got to set that to both now. Oh, it wasn't good. Yeah, we got to set that to both. Whoop, in the middle. Right there. I wish we had some scroll wheel support. That'd be pretty nice. Uh, okay. Bleed air is good. External power units off. Anti-skid light on. Lights off. Nav lights and taxi lights. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and program the FMC real fast. It's using the default FMC of X-Plane 11. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Our route, like I said, is going to be the Racer 5 with a Springfield transition. Then we go down to whole intersection. And then uh, from there on, we, we move on. So go to status page, make sure it works. I have a Navigraph uh, database in here for current. So it doesn't say out of date anymore. 
That's really nice. I like to see that. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's go ahead and go to the uh, flight plan page. We're doing MCI to Memphis, so KMCI to Memphis, KMEM, destination set. We can execute that. All right, and then we look at our route. So we want to do the Racer 5 departure with the Springfield transition. Go to departure here, departure page. I'm going to select our runway. I right, said so we're taking off our runway left, one left, I mean. So one left. We're doing the Racer 5 departure and a Springfield transition. That looks good to me. I'll execute him. And we it's starting to paint our picture here. Now we go back to the arrival page, do Memphis. And we're doing the barbecue two for the ILS three six right approach. So barbecue two, three six right. That'll work. ILS three six right, please. That is great. Hit execute. And we're good. So let's go to the legs page now. And you can see here vectors and then MCI and then grilled. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove these and we're just going to do grilled. So we're going to depart one left and then go over to grilled intersection is what we're going to do here. So just like that. Oh, it didn't like that. I meant to the vectors grilled to the vectors. Boom. There we go. Like that. Execute him. That's going to make more sense to us now with what we want to actually do. So that looks good there. Grilled to bum to SGF. Then we want barbecue. Oh, we want hole. They don't have the whole uh, intersection in here. So we want hole before we get to barbecue. So hole WH. Uh, make sure it's not in there already. Yeah, you see the discos there. That works for me. Okay, cool. So we're going to do it right there. Hole intersection WH O. L L. One more L. There we go. And he'll go in there. Then barbecue goes right there. So that makes more sense. So Springfield to hole, the barbecue to Fincher to ready, uh, to Jesty, and then Beert, Lunar, Bowen, Jigma, Jawa. Uh we don't want vectors. We want to go to Hadan there. So we'll do that. Execute it. And that looks pretty good for our trip. We can't tell 100% here, but we get an idea there a little bit. We can uh, declutter things, too, with these different things. Unfortunately, the weather radar doesn't work in this. Oh, yes, it does. I lied. It does work uh, in TCAS. It wasn't working before, so I don't know what I did there differently. We have the weather radar working. That's kind of nice. There is some uh, weather in the area and some weather moving down south of in the southern part of Missouri for the most part. So our trip looks good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and continue with the taxi checklist before we get out of here. What do we got here? Taxi and takeoff checklist is going to be flaps. We're going to check that. We're going to take off with flaps two notches. You can see it moving right there. Going to be flaps 15 for departure. Yaw damper is on. That looks good. Flight controls. We'll go ahead and check those. Got left, neutral. Right, neutral, forward, back. That looks good there. And we can even see outside. We got the, we got that working as well, the, the rudder. So what we need to do now is get rid of that little air cart. Remember I showed you you can hide it? You just hide it like that. It's that easy. So now we are ready to get on out of here. Let's uh, go ahead and go to a marshaller's uh, position. I love doing this. Oh, actually, you know, let's uh, release our parking brake first. That'd probably be nice. That would be nice. Let's go ahead and do that. Parking brakes released. And uh, let's do a marshaller's view of what they would see if you were marshaling this thing out today. Safely, at least. Because he's going to spin out. We're just going to spin this sucker out. That's what we're going to do. All right, so brakes are released. He's ready to go. Add that power. It's rolling forward. A hard turn to the right. There you go, buddy. Just like that. As you can see, the DC-8 will turn on a dime, man. It's a very, 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 very easy to turn airplane. All right, back to the front we go. 
turn our taxi light on for our taxi out of here. Oh, let's make sure that's working. All right, it is. Taxi light on. And we'll taxi down to runway, what is it, one left? Yep, one left. Here's a taxi light. Show you what it looks like. And so with this airplane, if you're wondering how to keep the nose wheel center line, you want to just line it up with a PFD. That's all you want to do. So this guy right here in the middle, if you have this in the middle, you're right there is where you want it. And it'll work out just right for you. As far as lighting goes, we can always turn up the cockpit lights. You got captain's panel lights there. And you got main lights as well. So you've got some uh, lighting options, but you have to wait for the sun to go down a lot more than it is now. It's uh, early evening, so we're not really worried about that too much. So not too long to get the airplane up and running and get your route planned. So what you want to do, and I didn't understand this in the very beginning when I first uh, when I first got it. You see right there it says uh, our course of 190. Let's go ahead and set that course to 190 because that's what we're going to want. Uh, eight. 190 set. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get the airplane to follow the FMS. So once you're in FMS mode here on the source, this is for the flight director. So we can click on flight director there. Uh, and it'll show what we want there. So let's go ahead and do our MCP while we're on our taxi out here. Uh, vertical speed, I'm gonna do plus. We'll, we'll climb out of here at about, they say 1500 feet per minute, so we'll do that. Uh, 1500 feet per minute, and then we'll increase it as we see fit. Altitude, let's do initial altitude of one five thousand. That'll work for me. One five thousand. So that looks pretty good. You can do the auto throttles. We're not going to worry about the auto throttles in the very beginning because the auto throttles for me, they'll sit there and swim. They'll go forward and back and forth and back. And it's kind of annoying, the sound of it. So I don't worry about that too much. But like I said, we're in flight director mode. If we click this over to the right, we'll be in the autopilot mode. And it's going to follow the FMS when we turn on the LOC button up here. When we turn that on, like you're going to follow the localizer, it's going to read it as a localizer and it will fly the FMS just like that see the uh, terminals there on the left Kansas City International Airport and not too much longer we'll be out of here it doesn't take uh, long to get down to runway one left and it's a straight shot out of here we're gonna make a right turn after a thousand feet and just be on the outside of that storm that's kind of moving in and then we'll head south and we'll join our departure to guild grilled intersections where we're going has that default sound, which is kind of unfortunate. It's one of those sounds that I do not like in X-Plane. Yeah, let's get this back on the center line. So you just line up that PFD just like that, and you're golden. That's a golden spot right there, and I'll show you from the outside view what that looks like. See, we're, we're right on that yellow line. Hello. Not bad at all. Awesome looking airplane, though, man. It is such a unique looking airplane. I love it. The taxi's very nice. It flies just as good. Like it has a really nice flight model on it. I really enjoy it. It's a slippery beast, so you gotta stay ahead of the airplane, that's for sure. We're gonna be doing a, a cruise altitude today of uh, 33,000 feet. So that's the plan of action. I don't think I told you that, but I told you now. Landing lights can come on now. Strobes can come on. And we are clear for takeoff. Runway one left. Make a turn to the right here. We'll just follow our yellow line. There we go. Just like that. And I could set my uh, auto throttles up here to 250 knots if I really wanted to. But like I said, I'm not really worried because we're going to be handling it by ourselves. But if, you know, it gets to be a little bit too much work, we'll turn them on. I, I'm not anticipating that at all, though. All right. We're about to take the runway, so let's do our final check here. Takeoff checklist. Flaps checked. 15. Yaw dampers on. Flight controls are good, free, and correct. Radios and nav aids are checked. Ignition override. We want those on all engines like that. And transponder goes to the on position. 
There we go. Lane lights are on, strobe lights on. Sorry, I hit my microphone stand there. <laughs> All right, line up on the runway. We'll get out of here. A little more power than that. You gotta remember, it's a big airplane, so you have to treat it like it is. Okay, that looks good. We'll line up nice and good there. We'll bring these engines up, let them stabilize. That looks good to me. And take off power. And take off power is set. Airspeed's alive. 80 knots. V1, rotate. See, those flaps just bring this sucker right on up. No problem at all. And we're pretty uh, light. Gear up. You see the uh, FMS popping up on our little HSI down there. So that means that it's working. Now, I forgot to turn the vertical speed mode here for our guy there. So he'll show us on the line where they want it to be. We're gonna pull our engines back here. Don't want to overspeed. Easy to get that 250 knots in this airplane. It'll speed like a Dickens. Let's bring that down to 40 miles. There we go. And we're above 1,000 feet, so we can start making our turn here to the right. Clean up the airplane, bring the flaps in. So it's not like a airplane you're used to where you have to rotate, you know, the airplane really hard. Uh, you have to, you know, basically it's not a Boeing. <laughs> It's a very flat flying airplane all the way down to the, you know, whenever you have to bring in the rest of the flaps there like that so, to pick up our FMS line there a little bit, get back up on that magenta line. So we can hit the loke button here and that's going to draw that on the uh, flight director as well. Some of these spots are not the best. The click spots, I really wish that would be fixed. See, I can't even click that. That's really annoying that I can't click that. There it went. It's it's a bug in the airplane that does that, unfortunately. Still making our turn. So now you, we can pick up the magenta line there on our flight director. We're holding that 1,500 feet per minute. We're going to increase that up to 2,000 feet. Let's go ahead and do that now. And turn out this way, a little more shallow. We're right on that magenta line right where we want to be. We're speeding like a bitch because I wasn't paying attention. That is my fault. <laughs> Normally I would go auto throttle um, like this, but the reason why I wasn't doing the auto throttle today is I wanted to show you what it does. It really starts to go back and forth. So yeah, we busted 250 knots under 10,000 feet, but yeah, that was my fault. Come on, back on up it goes. There we go. Get back on the flight director. That's looking good. Crossing through 5,000 feet. We're happy with that. All right, so we can go to autopilot on. And localizer is set. FMS is good, so it should be intercepting that shortly. Now we're back at 250 knots. Yeah, sorry about that. I was uh, too busy messing with too many things when you're flying an airplane for three people. That sometimes happens. Now we're headed to grilled intersection. See the airplane starting to make its turn. So we can do our after uh, takeoff checklist. Well, the auto throttles aren't doing too bad today. Usually they go back and forth, back and forth. That's why I don't like them. After takeoff checklist, landing gear is up, lights out. Flaps are up, lights out. Ignition override. We can turn those off and we turn the igniters off as well. So this goes to off. Igniters can come off now. We don't need those. All right. Recirculating fans, they can come back on. There we go. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. The Freon compressors, I don't turn them on because of this. Watch how loud this gets. See? That's, that's way too loud. So I'm going to turn them off. Not worried about it. <laughs> Airspeed, 250 knots max. Yeah, I know. That was my fault. I busted it. Uh, vertical speed, 1,500 feet per minute. We increased it up to 2,000. Autopilot, it's we've turned that on already. 
And transition at 10,000 feet. We're getting there. They uh, do the transition at 10,000, not 18,000, it looks like, on their, their deal here. Which is kind of strange. Something a little bit different. Let's have a look outside. You can see that awesome ortho for XP down there. There's downtown Kansas City. You see the uh, other airport right there. But yeah, look at ortho for XP. It is incredible looking. Absolutely awesome. Now we're over 10,000 feet now. Let's go ahead and do landing lights off. Taxi lights should have been off. Make sure that looks good. Strobes are good. Everybody's happy there. Fantastic. Now we can go to 2992. I don't know why they have it set at 10,000 feet to be, you know, your transition altitude, but whatever. I believe it's 18,000. It should be across the board, but I'm just going by what it says on the, the checklist. It's not a big deal. And we are almost to grilled intersection. Then we get to start our turn to Bravo uniform Mike VOR. There's 12,000. You can see right there, see how the course changed to 172. So I can move this over to 172 and you would know exactly where you're at. This is why I want the scroll wheel support. You sometimes can't get those numbers. It's kind of frustrating that you can't, but. Oh, well, what are you going to do? 12,600 feet. You can look out of these windows. It looks absolutely awesome. Look at that. And I'm not using X Enviro until, you know, we get a big update for that. I'm just not using it. The default, this is all default weather and color of X Plane 11. Everything default. So they've really upped their game with clouds in X Plane 11. Not to mention you get weather radar returns because with X Enviro, you just don't get weather radar returns and they haven't updated that or fixed it. And it's really, it's really shitty, honestly. I mean, it's been out for a long time and they haven't even remotely began to give us an update on that. They had that problem with the winds uh, and, you know, not having precipitation at all as a return on a weather radar. That's kind of dumb. So little things like that is the reason why I'm not using it. Have it shut off. 14,800. Coming up on one five thousand. We're gonna bring it on up, move it on up. Let's go up to eighteen vertical speed, please. See, sometimes you can't click that; it's really annoying. And we'll just go ahead and go up to thirty-three thousand feet. You can actually, yeah, you can. It can easily do two thousand, you know, on the vertical speed. I should have brought my speed as well. Man, I'm just batting a thousand today. I tell you what, let's go ahead and go to that, and we'll bring up our auto throttles. We'll climb out at 0.78 Mach. Let's see if the throttles do what it normally does, the back and forth thing I'm talking about. This airplane's got some power behind it. No lie. See, so it'll get up there to Mach 0.78, no problem. But then it's going to start doing its uh, back and forth stuff, I'm pretty sure. Here it goes back. See, and it goes forward. Does that. And it goes back and then it'll go forward again. See, and it just drives me nuts. I don't want it to do that. So I just turn it off and then I manually handle it. So let's put it about right here and we'll just keep an eye on the speed ourselves. That's how I like to do things. So yeah, so far my mistakes have been busted 250 below 10,000 feet. Oh, the weather is reloading. Uh, best of two, yeah, busted 250 under 10,000 feet and uh, also forgot to increase our speed after 10,000 feet. To be honest with you, I'm still very new to this airplane, so I'm still learning the systems of it and how it flies. So mistakes will be made. There we go. 19,000 feet and you as you can see it, it climbs quite nice I mean look at the speed we're at right there not a problem at all let's bring it up to 2200 feet per minute and we can we can get up there quick 
once we get closer to our cruise altitude, we'll, we'll decrease the vertical speed, obviously. But as you can see, it, it can it can do it. No problem. I like this little they give you like a GoPro kind of look like here. If you go to the seven key and with that ground ortho for XP, it looks amazing out there. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. In fact, we can just go away like this and then do a, a nice air to air shot. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. About right there. I think it's swivel it around. The DC-8 is such a beautiful airplane. Very sleek. Getting some hiccups there. If it tries to draw in all this while we while we pan around the airplane. That looks nice. We got out of the cloud cover pretty quick. Flight level 220 right now. Still climbing towards Bravo Uniform Mike. I'm watching my airspeed here. Get a little bit more power than that. We just don't want to go past the barber pole, that's all. No problems with that at all. Yeah, see this default one is showing you here. This is the default uh, FMC. So when we put these arrivals in here, you're not getting the actual every single altitude restriction. Uh, some of them are like that. So you have to manually put them in, which is not a big deal. But regardless, I can uh, open up my my uh, barbecue to arrival. I've got the Navigraph charts on the iPad. So let me go ahead and do that. If I can enter that in correctly, good Lord. There we go. Let me go to the charts. And looking at it, whole intersection right there. Hoog is flight level 260. All right, so that'll work. Barbecue, and then they got Fincher and all that, 16,000. And they have that in there. So that's actually interesting. Some of them don't, some of them do. But this one seems to have most of them in there, at least, as you can see right there. Not bad. Here's our turn over the bum VOR. Absolutely beautiful. So much quieter inside the cockpit. Fly through 26,500 uh, 26, on our way up to our cruise altitude. Won't take us too long. There's 27,000 feet. Well, I hope you guys had a good weekend. I had an interesting weekend. It was a lot of fun. Had some friends over, sang some karaoke. Pretty much the normal thing you do on the weekend. <laughs> I did uh, get the new version of uh, Fly Inside FSX, which Fly Inside I was what you should call it. Uh, it's VR software for um, FSX prepared, and they also have it for uh, X Plane. Even though X Plane, you know, has its VR coming out in the fall, uh, regardless, you can still do VR with that program. Uh, the reason why I hadn't been using it is because I was getting this black screen issue. You know, after. 10, 15 minutes of flight time, the whole thing was just black screen. You couldn't see anything. It was a real problem. And it was only displaying clouds in one eye. So they had a new version come out and they fixed that completely, they said. So I'm really excited uh, when Bugs is here. Uh, he'll get to try out VR and he'll get to see what it's like in X-Plane. But I'm excited to fly this DC-8 in VR. It's, it's a simple enough airplane that you can do it. Once you have, uh, you know, most of your most of your flows down and everything on an airplane, you can easily do it in VR. 133, let's go 133 for you. See, I can't hit that 133. Going 134. Those are the small little bugs that are annoying about, you know, uh, certain aircraft models. And I'm not dogging on Mike Wilson because I think he did a great job on the DC-8 and it, it, it needs improvements and it could be a really great product. It really could. 
It's not even that expensive. I believe I paid $25 for this thing. I think that's what it was. I am not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was like right around 25 bucks. And you get all the DC-8s. And you get the 60 series and the 70 series and the different variants of those. You see the barber pole's coming down a little bit there, but I didn't have to change my uh, my speed very much at all. Not bad. Pole intersection. And then Hoog. We don't have Hoog. I should. It should be Hoog after barbecue. Uh, after a hole, but that's all right. We'll just do the barbecue one and uh, we should be at 280 knots in flight level 230 barbecue. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that and we'll also watch how much time we are. There's our cruise altitude there. Wonderful. Keep an eye on the speed. Make sure we don't overspeed and pull it back just a little bit. That looks pretty nice right there. Flight level 330. And we don't have to do anything till we get over Springfield and towards Hole, but then barbecue. 280 knots and 230 for that flight level. And so you've got to really be ahead of the airplane. So we're going to use our uh, our maths, you know, between Springfield and Hole. So Hole to barbecue is at 45 miles. So we got to keep an eye on that 45 and add to it. But what you want to do is go um the the total diff distance so like between hole and barbecue you know 23,000 feet and whatever flight level we're at at hole the the amount of altitude you're dropping to get to 23,000 you take that times three that'll tell you how many miles you need to be out whenever you start your descent so we're going to use that formula today you gotta you know you have the help of the autopilot you know it's nice to have fms in this uh the the DC 871s that you know we were working with back in the day, they had FM FMSs in them, so uh, it's it's pretty realistic. Uh, but you have those tools to help you. You still have to manually fly the airplane for the most part with a lot of different things. It's not like the VNAV, you know. And I I haven't gotten VNAV to work in this airplane. I don't even think it works in it, honestly. I really don't think it does. Over here at cruise altitude, one thing I hope that they fix soon enough in the next plane is. The terrible contrails right there they're too dark colored you know way too dark but look at that ortho for xp man it looks like we're flying over missouri look at that that is incredible looking all right we're just above springfield missouri let's see if we can see it down there as we make our turn over the vr uh, springfield missouri down below us the VR isn't on the field, but it's close to it. I'm just going to see if we can see it or not. There's the field right there. Yeah, the Springfield VR is close by, but there's the airport right there. Very cool. All right, so we want to get to the barbecue intersection at flight level 230 at or below uh, 280 knots. So what we want to do is do our conversion, like I was talking about earlier, and that is... You know, we're at 33,000 feet and we want to make 23,000 feet. So that's only 10,000 feet, right? We have to make uh, down to barbecue. So you take that times uh, three, which would be 10 times three, and that would give us 30. So 30 nautical miles out from barbecue, we'll start our descent down to flight level 230. And we're going to keep a good, you know, decent descent of about 1,800 feet per minute is the is, a, is like a good, uh, a good estimate. Uh, so that's the plan of action there. And... Uh, we can continue on. We've got about 90 something miles till we get to whole intersection. So this is the long stretch of the cruise. That's the, the most quiet. Making our turn over whole intersection now towards barbecue. Now, remember we want to do 30 miles out to barbecue. We're at 46 now. At 30 nautical miles, we're going to start our descent down to barbecue intersection. We're going to slow the airplane down to 280 knots. Easier said than done, but uh, probably right around, uh, I don't know, 40 miles. I'm going to cut the power and let the airplane start to slow down so we can manage it a little bit better on its way down. You can see right now we're over a whole intersection and get a good idea of our arrival. There's barbecue there and Fincher and all that stuff. 
Uh, and then we go to the right out there and we go to, uh, what's that? Hada, 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 H Hayden. That's what it is. Hayden out to Hayden to make that, uh, capture of the localizer. So the arrival is starting to come together. Now I put time uh, to the standard or the, um, the uh, local time uh, with uh, the daylight savings. So the sun is starting to go down outside. You see how beautiful those shadows look on the DC-8. Not too shabby at all. Keep an eye on this and we'll be in Memphis before you know it. 37 miles, so in seven nautical miles, which is going to go fast. So let's get this thing ready to go. 23,000 feet. Three, boom, like that. And a vertical speed of, well, we're going to do not just 1,800. We're going to do 2,000 to start with. But we're getting close. So 35, 34. All right, I'm going to start slowing the airplane down. So let's go ahead and pull the power. Back to about right there. It's good. And we'll really start this airplane. Let it slow down. We want to be 280 knots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 280. I'm going to let it get a little bit slower. And then we're going to start our descent right at 30 miles here. So we're at 32. That airplane's losing its speed, which is good. That's what we want. 31. And we're going to be 30. So let's go ahead and start our descent. There's a vertical speed there. I mean, 2000 is going to be a little bit. And what we do is we're going to adjust the vertical speed to maintain the speed that we want to carry uh, in our descent, essentially. That's coming together quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Let's uh, let's check out checklists. Make sure we're not forgetting anything on the descent check. Descent and approach briefing. So we're doing ILS from a 3-6 right approach. And we can do over here on this uh, second FMS. We can click arrival data. And on that page, it's going to show us here the ILS that we're doing. We're going to 3 6 right approach. Shows you the runway elevation at 335 feet. The local uh, bearing, so that's going to be a course of 001 when we get there. Uh, frequency of 11135. So 11135. Let's put that in up here under nav 1. 11135. So we go 35. Actually, let's do the big one first. 111 and then 35. There we go. 11135. Hit the button. Now that's in the correct one. And if we wanted to, we could turn on the uh, little audio sequence so it would let us know uh, what ILS we're actually picking up. So that would be quite nice. Now you see, since we stayed ahead of the airplane, it's doing about 264 knots on its descent, which is fine for me because this airplane is so difficult to slow down. I'd rather be slower than be faster when it comes to this descent of 280 knots. So those are just altitude re uh, speed restrictions, essentially. I don't want you going over it. If you're underneath a little bit, it's going to be all right. Mm, we're at 260. I can add a little bit of power here. There we go. Don't mind Siri being stupid in the background. I didn't even tell it anything. I think it was like something I said that it was like, oh, did you want to speak to me? No, I did not, Siri. Thank you very much, though. ILS frequency is checked. Runway course. Uh, we'll set that here. It's going to be, like I said, 001. Let's see if we can actually get that today. 001. Are you going to be there? Come on. Oh, oh, it's so close. Come on. It's going to be 02, isn't it? Yep. 002. I can't get 001, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so that's good to go. Windshield heat is on. Seat belt signs. Not worried about it. Hydraulic panel is checked. Pressurization is good. And we'll turn the landing lights on under 10,000 feet. That'll make it nice and good. How are we looking here? Barbecue, 13 miles out. We gotta make that. I think we'll do it. No problem. Yeah, we'll make it no problem. And it's holding 263 knots. I'm actually pretty happy. It's going a little quicker. So right where I have the, the engine set is actually not bad at all because we're gonna continue that descent down and we don't want to get too fast. It'd be easy to do. Because beer is going to be 250 knots, 12,000 feet. So we'll just continue on down. No problem. Barbecue, then Fincher at 16,000 will be the next one. Nine nautical miles. Damn, I think we're going to need a little bit more than that. Which is fine, because remember, we have 280 knots to play with here. So we can get it up to 280 knots just based off its descent, you know, angle. 
And we're going to continue on down to 16,000 feet. We're not going to slow down. There we go, 16,000 feet. We're looking all right. Let's see if we're going to make barbecue. Five miles out, we're at 25,000 feet. Will we make it at 230? We might. We just might. We're going down to Fincher to 1,600. Or not 1,600, 16,000. And on this one, when we come through 18,000, I'm changing it to the local altimeter setting. I think I think that might be like a, a British setting or something like that. There we go. So we were off by a little bit on that one. Should have been a little hef heavier descent. I was close, but no cigar. We're off by about a thousand, about 1,300 feet or so there. So venture at 16,000. Let's continue this sucker down. Do 2400 feet per minute. Remember, we can get away with 280 knots, so if we can, we can make sure those engines that are idle. We get the lights coming on now. Are those lights are those that's the sun. I think it might be the sun. Yep, sun doing this glaring deal. Yeah, and it is. That's okay though. 22,000 feet. So this arrival is going to be pretty quick. Pretty quick. We got the ILS course dialed in. We got ILS set. Once we get the ILS popping up here, it'll actually come down here. You'll see the little dots, you know, for the glide slope. It'll be a red little dot for the glide slope, and it'll be white back and forth for like your normal, you know, this thing, you know, the needle back and forth for the localizer. Let's pop outside one last time. You see that descent? There's the sun going down behind us. That looks very nice indeed. And you can start to see parts of Arkansas and Tennessee's on the other side over there. As we continue our descent, we're right at about 280 knots. That's pretty much where we want to be. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to make 16,000 at Fincher. And how many miles out are we? Two? Okay. It's going to be tough to make these uh, altitude restrictions. I should have started my descent a lot earlier. Maybe by 10 miles. Maybe I was off with it. Then I wasn't, uh, I was going pretty quick too in that initial part there. So oh, there's 281. So let's combat that with this. Bring that nose up a little bit. We'll just maintain that the best we can here. Okay, we had to cross Fincher just now, and we were way off. Man, I, I, I can't get this thing to slow down. I can't get it to, to descend. It's a real problem in this airplane sometimes. All right. So we're going to have to be ahead of the game a lot more than uh, than I thought. It's starting to pick up speed again, so we need even be less than that. Try 2,100 feet per minute. I'll bring that nose up. Because the airplane is just so sleek. And you can't use speed brakes in the DC-8. Speed brakes will kill you. You cannot activate speed brakes at all in flight. You only use them on the ground when you land. That's the only time that it's okay to do that. All right, Jesse's uh, beard's going to be 12,250. So 12,250. 12,000 and we'll do 250 knots on this guy. I should probably go out of throttle on that and it'll do its thing. It'll maintain 250. That way we're, we're doing all the arrival stuff. We won't uh, make a mistake like we did on our departure of, you know, messing with stuff and letting the auto throttles get away from us or the, the throttles for that matter. All right, 60. So we're below 18,000 feet. Let's go and go to the local altimeter setting there. We're starting our turn now towards Jesty. Jesty, Jesty. And, uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Altimeter in Memphis. Winds are 290 at 4 knots, 10 statute miles of visibility. A few clouds at 1,100 broken, 11,000 uh, broken at 18,000. Altimeter 2984. Let's do 2984. That low pressure system. This is another thing I'm not a big fan of right here. So you can't really see what the barrow's doing. There we go. Ooh, 2984, got it. I think it does it for both sides. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. 
And see, this thing is a 280 knots, and it, I mean, it couldn't hit 250 if it wanted to, honestly. We're going to go slower than that. Let's do like 1,900 feet per minute. Well, we're, we're not going to bust our 250 knots once we get there. So 280 is good. So if we have to hold at Beert for a little bit to get down in speed, we will at 12,000 feet. I think we're actually going to make Beert at 12,000 feet. Yeah, we will. No problem. So that's good news, at least. So we're 280 knots, and then once we get to Beert, we're going to hold off there at the 12,000 feet we have selected and uh, let it slow down 250 knots. So we can get a hold of this airplane and be like, hey, I tell you what to do. It's just it's just really, really slippery. So you have to stay way ahead of it. Nice view outside. Get ready to descend into the clouds. With the sunset behind us. It looks awesome. All right, coming up on 12,000. We're going to let this thing slow down to 250 knots. We pretty much hit. We were just off by a couple hundred feet there, but not not too shabby, honestly. Not too bad at all. So our next one is going to be, let's just go ahead and descend down to Jawa's altitude of 4,000 feet. So we'll do 4,000. Letting this thing slow down to 250 knots before we start our descent. Do about easy hundred. I'm turn off the auto throttles again here. I want those suckers to be dead. I want to slow this puppy down. There we go. That looks good. Vertical speed is set. 1800 feet per minute. We're going to adjust as we need. Back in the day with the DC-8, it's such a slick airplane that uh, they used to drop the landing gear to add drag. I mean, we're not going to be doing that, but you could do it that way if you wanted to. Let's try 1,500 feet per minute. I'm trying to make this thing happy at 250 knots, and it's pretty difficult for us. And it's holding pretty good right there, 1,500 feet per minute. Down to 4,000 feet. The airport's right off our nose right there, and we're going to be doing our little left downwind. We'll be going through these clouds shortly. You can see the night lighting. The night lighting is pretty good in this airplane. Not bad. I like the HDR panel light options. It's pretty good looking. We're going to actually make our first one. We're going to make Bowen four miles out. We're actually going to make our first one at 10,000 feet. It wants to slow to 210 knots. Oh, man, that's going to be tough to do. We'll try, though. We can bring this back up to 10,000 in time. Probably not in time. Woo! Hang on. There it goes. Got it just in time. So we'll slow down to 210 knots here. No, it's continuous descent. Didn't. Oh, there it goes. It's fine. We're going to slow to 210. And we'll continue down to Hayden, which is going to be 2,000 feet. It's going to be where we want to be at. So. Let this baby slow, slow, slow. Airport's off on our left under the clouds, but it is there. You can see it right over there. No weather in the area, so that's good. We're at 10,000 feet, so let's go landing lights on. And let's do our checklist here. Still slowing. There's 210 right there. All right, let's go ahead and continue our descent down to 2,000 feet. There we go, 2,000 and a negative. Let's do 1,500. 1,500 seemed to be working pretty well for us there. So vertical speed for that. And down she goes. Approach check. Altimeter set. Flight instruments are checked and set. Radios and approach aids are set. ILS 36 right approach. Radio altimeter is set. Autopilot set. Galley power, not worried about it. Off. Ignition override goes to all engines. Let's do that. All engines and igniters come on. That's in case we have a, you know, a fail, engine failure. Look at that. Going through the clouds. It looks awesome. There's the airport right there, and there's the FedEx facility. So we can see that quite easily here. Yeah, it's, it's handling 1,500 feet per minute pretty good. I mean, and we're staying at right around 210 knots for the most part. 
I'm going to have to go up a little bit more there to play with it. But that's okay. So those are good. Landing gear, we'll put that down when we acquire the glide slope. Speed brakes, we'll arm those. A little bit different than a Boeing. Usually you pull them back to arm them. In this airplane, you do pull them back to arm them like this. But when they retract, when they open, extend, you push it forward, which is totally different than what you're used to. Uh, so that looks good. We're maintaining a pretty decent speed here the best we can. As long as we don't exceed 250 knots, I'm, I'm happy with it. 8,000 feet now. We just got to get down to 2,000 there, and, and we'll easily do that. No problem. Flaps, we'll do that when we're on final approach because this airplane, you have to be quite slow to use the flaps. Not 100% sure what the flaps speeds are exactly as I've seen conflicting things between placards and the other stuff, so I need to look up that a little bit more. I haven't ever damaged the flaps on this airplane, so I assume it's okay. I won't even introduce any flaps into it until we're right around 180 knots or 200 knots or so. Okay, flying right below this cloud deck here. And you can pretty much get a good visual. You know, they got the two highways there and the airport's back there. So what I do is I usually fly out to the, when I'm doing a, you know, by myself, I'll fly just past this highway and then you can click, you know, pick up the uh, ILS right there. But we're all right for now. Getting closer to Hayden. Intersection. And then it'll start that turn, and then we can go to loc mode for the ILS. And what we'll do is we'll go to heading hold. Uh, and then from the heading hold, we'll, we'll roll that about like that. Uh, we'll go heading, and then we'll arm the localizer, and then it should pick it up. And then once we have the glide slope popping up, we'll hit GS. We'll be on the glide slope as well. All right, this thing does not want to slow down. You see this? You see what I'm talking about? It's so slippery. I mean, they want us at 210 knots. It's like, we're doing everything we can here, man. Besides dropping the gear to you know, kill airspeed. Once we get down to 2,000 feet, we'll be okay. But I mean, like, even at 1,400 feet per minute, this thing just wants to scream in. You just can't go fast. At, or you can't slow it down. It's tough. But it's a challenging airplane to fly, and I enjoy it. I really do. Okay, 5,300. Are we going to make 2,000 here? I don't think we can because I tried to slow it up as much as I could. My God, man. This is a, this is tough. I they say we're, we're supposed to be there at 4,000 feet and then Hayden at 2,000, so we'll see. We might be okay here. But look at that. No flaps, nothing. 1,400 feet per minute. And this thing is almost back. It's 240 knots. Like, it does not slow. There's our turn. And you can't introduce these, slap, these flaps in yet. You have to really, really bleed all your speed off. All right. So the localizer, it's popping open right there. You can see it. We get a nice intercept heading here in a second. I can see why DCA pilots used to drop the gear to try to get this thing to slow. Because, I mean, what else are you going to do, you know? Look at that. Just not enough drag. Not enough drag. All right, that looks like a good uh, heading right there. The one I had selected there actually isn't too shabby. It'll go a little bit to the left there, about right there. And I'll go to heading hold mode. From heading hold mode, we can now move this source over to nav one. So let's do that to nav one. There it is right there. And we have glide slope right there coming to life. So we'll just go to loc. Once it goes to loc, it's going to be in localizer capture mode. Now we just got to slow this puppy down. Look at this. 200 and nearly 250 knots. Can't slow it. Can't put the can't put flaps down. Can't do anything. Trying to make 2000 feet here. I mean, the only thing we can do is put the gear down. So let's go gear down. Go taxi light. Bam. It's going to help slow the plane down the best we can here. But it's just, it's too fast. It's like it doesn't have enough drag. That's my own, one of my only complaints with this thing so far. Even when you're trying to be ahead of the game, you know? There we go. It is starting to slow now. A little bit. 
we're going to wait to intercept the glide slope here. I mean, the whole time we've been coming in with the engines at idle, like completely at idle. And it's just not enough. There's 2,000. So we're actually starting to slow down now. So that's not too bad. All right. So we'll go first set of flap. We've got the localizer. That looks nice. Got our runway in sight right there. So you can see putting the gear down, it put a lot of drag out there. It really helped slow the airplane down. Okay. That looks good there. Still waiting to grab this glide slope. There's 140 knots. Can I add that power? So our VREF is right around 140 knots here. So that's what we want to keep it at. Maintaining 2,000 feet right there. Wow. Yeah, the gear put a lot of drag out, man. Fun airplane to fly. Just different. Okay, glide slope, you ever going to come down? I think we'll soon enough. We're just going to hold this right here. Pull power back a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Pretty stable here. Not bad at all. Just waiting for our glide slope to drop down. I don't think it is yet. Yep, still hasn't come down yet. There's the glide slope. So now that we have the glide slope movement there, we can go to GS mode. There we go. So it'll capture the glide slope. We'll start pulling this power back. And now we can set the flaps for landing. There's flaps 25 more power there the big barn door flap so it really really slows this baby down and flaps 35 for landing and we're right on the glide slope right on the localizer looking good and to uh, go out of autopilot mode all you gotta do is just flip it over into flight director mode if you want or off and we'll do that here at about the a thousand foot call out so now we have a radio altimeter moving now. There's 1,400. A little bit more power than that. A little more power than that. Just a tad more right there. Looks good. And you see how much of a, like a descent profile you have in the DC-8? Kind of reminds me of like a Cessna. Like you have that nose down attitude on final approach. There's the thousand call out. Let's go ahead and flip it off. All right. I have the airplane. And flying it from here on out. Pretty good right now. Pull back a little bit of power. But it's a very, very stable airplane once it's once you have it together, you know. More power back. It's so easy to overspeed this airplane, so you got to be on top of it. Five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah, we know five hundred. Gotcha. Gotcha, pal. It's a tad low. Bringing that nose up a little bit here. There we are. Back on it. Let it come on down. So looking nice and stable here. There's the inner marker. Now in the round out. And we are down. Fly that nose. 
Reversers open. This thing slows down in a hurry, man. It's got all those four engines out there. And there's our 60. Clear it. Very nice. Welcome to Memphis. You can probably take this high speed taxiway out right here, actually. That worked out for everybody. And then we'll watch a replay of our landing. I was pretty happy with the landing. It's, uh, like I said, it's, a, it's such a long airplane. You have to really watch how much flare you give it. And uh, you have to time it just right with the amount of power, you know, you're, you're cutting out to try to get a smooth landing in it. They don't need very much flare, otherwise you'll be tail striking it. All right, let's watch this replay. Here we are just about over the numbers right there. And we start the flare. And you can see right here, you don't want very much flare, just a little bit. And then it gets in that ground effect. And then let it come on down. Just kiss them like that. And then fly that nose wheel. Reverses open. Speed brakes are out. And she slows down pretty quick. That looks beautiful with the FedEx facility back there in the background. That's amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and clean the airplane up. We'll turn the landing lights off. We'll bring up the flaps. We will bring these speed brakes back in like that. And let's do the after landing checklist. That's the fun part. Anti-skid, that can come off now. So let's go ahead and go over here and turn the anti-skid off like that. Slow this baby down. Radar and transponder can go over to standby mode. So let's do that now. Standby or off one of the two. I'm just in standby modes. That'll work. That'll work just nice. Flaps and speed brakes are up. Retracted. Pedo heat. That can come off. Landing lights are off. Taxi light on. Stab trim is neutral. Parking brake. Not worried about it. And then we go to the shutdown checklist. One thing I do know that's not on this particular little, sh this is the short checklist, is uh, you go this to off, and we turn the igniters off as well. I think that's part of the shutdown checklist, honestly. If I'm not mistaken. And we're just going to go taxi in here to the FedEx facility. Cross the cross runway. And into the gate we go. But yeah, it's a fun airplane to fly. It's it's de it's definitely different. You know, it. I'm gonna need a lot more practice in it to get good at it. Um, but the biggest thing I've you know ran into is just it's so slippery. There's not enough drag on the airplane, and it's probably just that way. I mean, you can look at the design of it and just go, yeah, that thing doesn't seem like it wants to slow down. It's a fast airplane, especially the 71 with those big CFMs out there. All right, where are we going to taxi? Where are we going to park at over here today? Park over here, actually. To the right. Let's do that. We'll park just in front of this guy over here. That'll work for me. They have little marshlers out there. That's what we're going to look for. There he is right there. That's the guy we're going to be parking at. Him. So let's go ahead and turn our taxi light off so he knows that we know where he's at. Like that. And let's go marshal it in. Start our turn now. He should be giving us a marshal in just a second here. A little tighter turn than that. He's registered us yet. Yep, he doesn't seem to care, does he? Oh, there he goes. Now he's telling us to to go forward. There we go, just like that. And we are here. 
Parking brake set. Should have turned off those strobes. That's all right, though. It happens. Happens to the best of us. Strobe lights come off there. And uh, now we just want the air start. Their air, their air cart down there should be good to go. So show that and we'll go to external power. We'll wait for that blue light. They, in real life, they would pull in like this and then you sit there with all the engines screaming or they'd shut all down, you know, all the engines but one engine one or something. And then uh, we'd wait for the blue light. Once they had the blue light, then they could shut it down. But sometimes you have issues with the GPU or the, you know, not working right and they wouldn't get the light. And that was the worst because then the engines, they're just sitting there burning fuel and you have to go find another power unit. And at night, the blue light's on right now, but you can't tell. It doesn't light up like these, unfortunately. So external power is good there. Once we have the blue light, we can go ahead and kill the engines. Like that. And once engine one's offline, all of this stuff's gonna go bye-bye. And we'll do the shutdown checklist. So we have shutdown check, ignition overrides off, Engine anti is off, fuel switches off, inverters that can go to the off position. Three circulation fans, those can go off. Let's do that over here. They're off. See how the lights don't look right at night on some, unfortunately. Uh, free on compressors off, bleed air is going to go to the off position. There it goes. Nav lights, beacon off. Uh, we didn't get the beacon yet. Now they, now we do. Now they can start loading the airplane or unloading. So we'll do the front door and the rear door. Do show the stairs. There we go. Seatbelt signs off, off, window, windshield, heat. Window heat should be off. There it is. Uh, radius and transponder off. There we go. Yaw damper can come off. Igniters are all off with that generators now. So let's shut this airplane down. Generators go off. Yep. And then we have bus power one, two, three, four off. And that is pretty much it. Flight recorder goes off and then uh, we've got the avionics and the battery. That's it. So avionics can come off and the battery can go off as well. Oop. Off. Bam. There we go. And now we're just sitting here on external power and uh, they can unload the airplane. So that's going to do it for this flight to Memphis from Kansas City and the uh, Mike Wilson DC 871. Let me know what you thought of it. It's a pretty cool airplane. Uh, and hopefully you guys uh, learned a few things if you did pick it up because there's not very many videos out there on the DC 8. When I was learning how to fly it, I didn't have what I normally do is go out there and try to find a YouTube video and learn from it. Uh, so hopefully this helps somebody else out that uh, picked up the airplane and is not sure how things work. Uh, I had a hell of a time getting the FMS to work originally. Uh, and hopefully that, that does help you out. But that'll do it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.